Today on the show... The Deadpool writers give legendary advice, you pick Game of Thrones' fiercest moments, and Natalie Dormer lives her truth. The last thing Natalie Dormer needs to do is get in a corset again. Hey everyone, welcome to the IMDb Show. I'm Tim Cash. I'm Carrie Doherty. It's Thursday, May 17th. We have a great show today. It is a big week for movies. Huge week. Just as the world is coming down from Avengers Infinity War, it's time to get amped again because Deadpool 2 is Deadpool. out. Deadpool! I am so excited for Deadpool 2. I love the fact Josh Brolin killed it as Thanos, mm -hmm. one of the best supervillains we've ever seen, and now he's back as Cable, which was one of my favorite characters from the cartoon series. This is one of my favorite superhero movies because of the brand of humor that Deadpool brings. Yeah. The breaking the fourth wall, it really just subverts the superhero genre. <gasps> fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick are the writers on the first one, and they're back for this one as well. We recently caught up with Rhett and Paul to get their advice on how to become superhero screenwriting legends. Hi, I'm Rhett Reese. And I'm Paul Wernick. And we are the co writers of Deadpool 2, Deadpool 1, Zombie Land, G.I. Joe Retaliation. That's, that's the highlights, right? Yeah. That's the, that's the and big some stuff. low lights. <laughs> and today, we're here to teach you how to be superhero screenwriting legends. L stands for looks, as in don't have any. We don't have any. People want to see beautiful faces on stars, not writers. So look your worst. Do you like what you see? You look like an avocado. Had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado. Yeah. E stands for expect to wait forever for your movies to get made. Deadpool took six long years. Deadpool 2, we've been writing for three years. We recommend an induced coma. Threat terminated. G stands for get yourself a good therapist, one who specializes in anxiety, check, self-loathing, check, writer's block, check, and addiction. Check. So dark. You sure you're not from the DC universe? E stands for energy. Keep yours up. Try snorting lines of finely crushed glass. Nothing lights up a brain better. Total clarity. Watch for nosebleeds. Got to enjoy the little things. N stands for never let them know you write in tidy whities a half shirt, Crocs, a puka shell necklace, and nipple band-aids. Red's got three nipples. Whoops. Whoops. I know, right? D! D stands for don't allow yourself distractions. Sure, getting good at Candy Crush is fun, but what will it get you other than being so good at Candy Crush, I will crush all the f***ing candy! Who wants some? The next time you want to drown somebody, just invite me. And that's how you become a superhero screenwriting legend. And this is why they don't let screenwriters on camera. Yeah, this is it for us. It's over. Go home. Now, the first time I saw today's guest was in her debut feature film, 2005's Casanova, alongside the great Heath Ledger. Since then, I've watched her in Tudors as Anne Boleyn, The Hunger Games as Cressida, and of course, as Marjorie Tyrell in Game of Thrones. Welcome, Natalie Dormer. Are you okay? Oh, fine. I found your scarf earlier downstairs. Do you want me to bring it up? No. No, not now. Please look after it for me. Hi, Tim. Hi, how are you? I'm really well. Welcome to the IMDb Show. Thank you very much. This is great to have you here because I'm a fan of so much of your work. Let's talk about In Darkness. Mm -hmm. What's this film about? This film is a psychological thriller about a blind musician who hears a murder in the apartment above her. And so she then has to navigate some bad stuff that starts getting out of control. Did you know Miss Cavell? We were neighbors. She was always kind to me. So you didn't hear anything? No. What did you learn about acting from this role of In Darkness? I learned so much on darkness. On. I don't even really know where to begin. Because I started writing it with Anthony nine years ago, the whole process of redrafting of scripts and then getting producers on board, securing financing, it's made me a better actor insofar as when I turn up on set, I know what it's taken for everyone to get there. Right. But inversely, I'm also more confident now about going up to a writer and saying, can I change this line? Because what you realize is, 
a writer just wants it to feel real and true. I did that more in Picnic at Hanging Rock, which was one of the projects I did straight after In Darkness. Some of your companions have managed to lose themselves. We've escaped. Something terrible has happened. Here it is then, retribution. This is set in 1900s Australia. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's it all about? It's about a girls' boarding school. Three girls and one teacher disappear. And then the mystery of these girls' disappearance, trying to get them back, and the impact it has within the school and within the wider community. Why did you station an officer on my property without asking my permission? I heard you were having some trouble with the possum. Sergeant, I have told you before. This is a ladies' college, and I am charged with their reputations. If I had been on that picnic, none of this would have happened. I'm proud of it because it's a mishmash of genres. It's incredibly funny in places, dark humor. It is gothic and thriller-esque and visually very unique. Let's talk about uh, another one of your characters. We'll bang through them. Uh, <laughs> Bish bash <laughs> let's go. Uh, <laughs> let's go Game of Thrones. Okay. Marjorie Tyrell. One of the most epic scenes for me in the entire of the Game of Thrones history is, unfortunately for your character and a lot of Cersei's enemies, that end of the season six finale. Cersei understands the consequences of her absence and she is absent anyway, which means she does not intend to suffer those consequences. Do you have a favorite epic moment from all of Game of Thrones? Oh, that's a really good question. There's too many, like, uh, you know, spoiler alert, when that dragon last season was like falling into the ice and then when it woke up again, I mean, I was like practically, you know, apoplectic. Run! 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 Uh, we're gonna be back with Natalie in a minute and Kerry's gonna join us for questions from your fans and the game. But first, you all had some amazing suggestions when we asked what you think is the fiercest Game of Thrones moment. Here they are. I think the fiercest Game of Thrones moment was the Battle of the Bastards. A little kid was running around, he ran straight. You gotta run zigzag if somebody's shooting arrows at you. It literally made me fall out the chair because I was running in my seat. I think that my favorite fiercest moment is when the dragon is actually on the other side breaking the wall. That for me was just like, holy shit, like things just got real. When Danny frees all of the slaves and burns all of the slave masters to the ground. Danny was so bad. Remind them what happened when Daenerys Stormborn and her dragons came to Marine. When Ned Stark got killed in the first season. Bring me his head! At the end of the day, good art evokes emotion, and that's when I knew it was gonna be a great show. When Daenerys and Jon Snow um, forked. I hope I deserve it. You do. We're just waiting for these two people to have sex. Uh, it's all I can think about all the time. We shouldn't be judgmental about these things. When the mountain crushed the viper's head like a melon, that was one of the most disturbing moments of television. Don't fight the mountain. Don't, don't fight the mountain. Binge watched it all the way up to the Red Wedding and then... They all died! It was awesome! Ah! In In Darkness, because your character is blind, she relies a lot on her senses of touch and smell and taste. So today we thought it would be fun to find out which movies speak to each of your five senses. Let's start with taste. For taste, the first one that came into my mind, and I'll try not to blush as I say this, is Nine and a Half Weeks. <gasps> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the scene with Mickey Rourke and Kim Bassinger in front of the refrigerator. Okay, how about touch? Nine and a half weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You should just be my stock answer. Yeah, for every single yeah. one. <laughs> Staying in the romantic vein, I was thinking Dirty Dancing. The lift in the lake. All right, this should be interesting. What do you have for smell? Mad Max Fury Road, because of all that oil and gasoline that's right as, as the, and the metal as they're revving the engines and the dust and the heat. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Okay, an easy one for film, sight. Well, there's two, actually. There's Blade Runner and um, Dunkirk. For both of those films, the cinematography was outstanding. And lastly, sound. So sound for me, this documentary called Notes on Blindness about a writer who became blind a few days before his little baby boy was born. And he talks about as it rains everywhere, he can hear all the different sounds and the different textures yeah. and surfaces. And I found it really moving. I should also say that this is an experience of beauty. All right, it's time for questions from your fans. Yes. Great. At Doctor Who Fan 194 wants to know, 
You've played a lot of historical roles. Is there a period of history which you haven't tried your hand at yet, but would like to? I would love to do late 20s, early 30s. Why? Because I, I love the clothes. Yeah, <laughs> flapper dress. But I also yeah. think it was a really interesting time politically, which is probably not too far a parallel from what we're sort of going through at the moment. Uh, the next question comes from at Dormerable. Hey, Natalie, I'm a huge fan. Uh, what's your favorite BTS moment with the cast when you were in the Tudors? My favorite BT. BTS behind moment. the scenes. Oh, behind the scenes. Of course I know what that means. <laughs> there were some great drinking nights with Henry Cavill and the rest of the cast in Dublin. We'd have a really good day at work and then we'd all go drinking with the Irish. Could you ever drink anybody under the table? Or My liver no. has built up over the years. Yeah. Being with an Irishman and having Irish friends for a decade will yeah. do that to you. Sure. We will fight and we will die! Um, let's talk about what are you watching this weekend? I've got so much to catch up on. Everyone has been telling me to watch Versace. Yeah. So... Andrew Cunanan, 27 years old. He's killed four men. I'm Andrew. So what do you do? I'm a serial killer. I need to watch season four of Peaky Blinders. Anthony's about to kick off uh, shooting season five. Why? Hey! Why? Why? Because we f***ing can! Because we f***ing can! And if we can, we do! Uh, for me, I think this weekend, and I know for you as well, Deadpool 2's Deadpool coming out. Deadpool 2, yeah. We'll That's we'll huge. That. We will be known as... X-Force. Isn't that a little derivative? You're absolutely right. And then as well for me, my god kids are in town. So I will be taking them to see show dogs. Which oh, right. Is, so this is a dog who goes undercover at a dog show. The glamour, the fashion, the toilet water. Mm-hmm. Natalie Dormer, thank you so much for being here. Thank Such you, a Tim. pleasure having you in person. Uh, in Darkness is in theaters May 25th. And you can also check out Picnic at Hanging Rock when it drops on Amazon on the same day. Before we go, be sure to go to imdb.com slash show where you can watch past episodes and rate all the episodes, which you should do because you love them as much as we love them. We'll see you next week. Take us out. It's this week's Trailer Trailer. The most amazing thing about this is Alex Trulove is going to have sex next week. Huh? Hot, sweaty, intercourse of a sexual kind. Oh. We can't tell anybody about the baby yet. I just told Bill. Yeah, and I told Harry. I told many, many people. Hey, little baby. Where are your... <laughs> tell me about the mission. Did you see anything unusual? Like an alien, you mean? Any big plans for the weekend, that Bill? Oh, you know, the usual. Gotta take the kids to soccer. I'm 30 years old. I wear a Hawaiian shirt to work. My boyfriend dumped me in a text. Let's set a on fire. Burn! Burn! Burn in the fire!